Okay. Now let's talk about some past paper questions from coordinate geometry. Okay. Question number one says, the coordinates of the points A, B are minus one, minus two, and seven, four respectively. Find the equation of the circle C for which A, B is a diameter. Okay. Now you have been told two coordinates or, or two points and AB is basically making the diameter of a circle and you have been asked to find out the equation of that circle. Okay, now I am not looking at these points for now. I'll just make a random picture just so you guys can imagine what exactly is happening. And then we will use that imagination to solve the question. Okay, so let's say here is a circle. And AB is the diameter, so the diameter could be, you know, it could be like this as well. It could be horizontal as well, vertical as well, not like this, obviously. Something of this type, okay? This is the diameter. And I know that these points are something else, but for now, just forget that. Just know this is A and this is B, okay? This would make some sense. Now, you have the coordinates of AB. How can you use the coordinates of AB to find what? What do we need for the equation of the circle? We need center. We need the radius of the circle. So we need the center and we need the radius. And let's see how can we find the radius and center of the circle using the two points. Okay, that is basically the idea now. If I have A and B, if I have the coordinates of A and B, I can certainly find out the midpoint using the midpoint formula. And that is going to give me the center. And I can use the length formula to find out the length of AB. And then I can divide that by two because I know radius is half the diameter or I can directly use the coordinates of center uh, and B or A to find out the radius. Okay, so this is going to be the radius and this is going to be the center and I would get the center by basically finding out the midpoint of AB because AB is the diameter and for the radius I am going to use the distance formula that we discussed in the very beginning. Okay. Anything that's coming to your mind? Any other opinion? Okay. All no, right. Miss. Okay. Okay. All right. So now let's start working. Okay. One thing is certain that the general equation is x minus a whole squared plus y minus b whole squared equals r squared. This is how the general equation is. And I won't get any mark for this because I need to find out the equation of the circle whose diameter is AB. So I need to plug in the exact center coordinates and the exact radius, okay? So I am basically looking for AB and the radius. This is what I need to find out. So for a b since it's the center we will find out the midpoint of a b okay now what is the midpoint of a b let me write down the coordinates of a that's minus one and minus two and this is seven and four for the coordinates of center or for midpoint of AB, I need to do X1 plus X2. So it would be minus one plus seven divided by two and then Y1 plus Y2. So minus two plus four divided by two. And this is going to give me six by two is three and two by two is one. 
So this is basically the midpoint of AB, but I was not interested in the midpoint. I was interested in the center of circle. Okay. So I got the coordinates for the center of circle and they are 3, 1. And for the next part, I need to find out the radius of the circle. So instead of using a, b and then dividing that thing by two, what I can do is I can just use the coordinates of center and a and the distance formula or the length formula would basically give me the length of this part. And then I can just use that as the radius. So I know that the radius is basically going to be root and I'm writing down the length formula x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared and this is going to give me okay now you can think about x2 and x1 as any two points because we are squaring that thing so that does not matter so what we can do is we can just use three minus minus one because this is minus one and then it's square plus one minus and then minus two and then it's square so this is going to give you root and then this would be four squared plus one plus two and this would be three squared and this would give you root 25 and this is going to be Five. Now, obviously, we're talking about the radius, so radius can't be negative, so we are only using positive five, and that has turned out to be the radius. Once I have the radius and the coordinates of center, I'm just supposed to plug in the values, okay? So, AB turned out to be three, one, and the radius turned out to be five. So, I can directly just erase A and B. And I can write down 3 and 1. And for r squared, I can, I can write 5 here and 5 squared would give me 25. So that is why we would get this as the equation of the circle. Now let me just explain this one last time and then we'll talk about the next question. You will come across this question in a lot of papers okay so just know that this is important and this unit itself is extremely important okay now the question was about finding the equation of the circle you guys know if you are interested in finding the equation of any circle you need to have the coordinates of the center and the radius using the given information. What was the given information? The diameter was given, not the diameter's length, but the coordinates of the points which were making the diameter A and B were given. Using A and B, I just calculated the midpoint of AB and we know that the midpoint of any diameter is basically going to be the center of the circle, right? So that gave me the center coordinates and then for the radius, I know it's basically from the center to any point uh, of the circumference. So center was given and for the circumference, uh, I could have uh, used A or B. I preferred A. So I just used the distance formula that we started in the first class of this chapter. And after plugging in the coordinates of both the points, I got five as the radius and then I just plugged in the center and R and I got this equation for the circle. Yes. Now ask me questions if you have any. Rafe, Munja and Motusam, anything that you would like to ask? No, Mr. Everything's clear. Okay. Motusam, were you able to understand this? Yes, Miss, but I have a question, Miss. Uh... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's when you plugged in the values for the to find the length. Why didn't we like use the use the values of and, uh, A and B? Yes, certainly. I could have used A and B, but when I will use A and B, that would give you the <laughs> diameter. You can certainly use A and B, that would give you 10, and then you need to divide the diameter by 2 because we were interested in finding out the radius, right? 
when i will yes. use a and b that would give me this length the like diameter. the length of the diameter yes and if you have the diameter you can divide that by two and then find the radius that's also fine okay uh, okay and munja anything else that you would like to ask no ma'am thank you okay all right perfect okay so okay now let's talk about another type of thing another type of question that the examiner can certainly ask okay so yes okay after now it's important let's pay attention it says the equation of a circle with center c is x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y minus 5 equals 0. Find the radius of the circle and the coordinates of c. Okay. All right. Now, this exactly is the equation of the circle and it's given. But why is it a three mark question? We know that from the general equation, we can easily just take out the coordinates of center and the radius. But this is a three mark question because if you look at the format of the given equation, that is certainly not what we have been talking about. This certainly is equation of a circle, no doubts about that, but it is an expanded version. We are used to talking about this format, x minus a squared, plus y minus p squared equals r squared. So life was very easy with this. We were able to find out the coordinates of center easily and the radius. But this is certainly not uh, what we are used to, okay? So first of all, I am going to use this given equation and convert it to the format that we are used to, okay? I need to just apply the completing square method with both x and y just so I get the equation in the form that I am used to dealing and then I would be in the position to uh, just talk about the radius and the coordinates of center. For now, I am not sure at all. This is not the format from which I'm used to picking up the center and the radius. Okay. So that is the problem right now. Okay. Now, again, this is also one of the most uh, favorite questions of the examiner. So you can come across this question time and again. And for that, the idea is fixed. Okay, We will be applying the competing square method for this. So let's do that. Okay. What do I have? I have x squared. I'll write down the x terms together. Minus 8x plus y squared plus 4y. And I'll take five on the other side. Five is not needed, okay? This is uh, what I have in the given equation. I've just uh, written it again with x coordinates, with x variable together and y variable together, okay? Because I'm ab about to apply the completing square method, okay? How do we apply the completing square method? x squared would come as it is. Minus 8x would come as it is. I need to add square of something. I need to subtract square of the same number because it's maths and I can't do things on my own. If I'm doing something, I need to balance that, okay? This is how the completing square method is. And we have discussed that in the first chapter that was quadratics, okay? Then we have plus y squared plus 4y plus, again, I am applying the completing square method both for x and y because in the general form, I have x minus a squared. This is a complete square. And then for y, I have the same thing, okay? So this is why I need to do it this way. Anyways, for y, I will add square of something and I will subtract square of the same number equals five. Now, what number exactly comes over here? We have discussed that. I've been telling you guys the half of the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is 8. What is the half of 8? It's 4. So I'll add 4 squared. I'll subtract 4 squared. Very good. And then what would come here and here? Again, the idea is same. I look at the coefficient of y. That's 4. I'll divide that by 2 and it's 2. So 2 and 2 would come here. And now I am in the position to write it 
this way. So this would become x. We have minus here, so I'll write down minus. And then this number right here comes over here. Then minus 4 squared, I'll write it down directly. That's 16 plus. For this thing, I will write it down as y plus 2. And then we have this minus 4 left. So it's just whole squared. And then minus 4 equals 5. Now I need to take the 16, this minus 4 on the other side. And this would give me x minus 4 whole squared plus y plus 2 whole squared equals 16 minus, like minus 16 minus 4 would give you minus 20. And when I will take this minus 20 on the other side, this would give you 20 plus 5. So finally, it's x minus 4 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 25. Okay, now I've seen students, they, for some reason, because the working is long, they just leave the question here, although the question was not about finding the equation. You already had the equation, but it was, uh, you know, expanded. The question was about finding out the coordinates of the center and the radius. So, let's just compare. A is basically the x coordinate. So, 4, comma, it's minus b, okay? It's minus b. And here I have positive 2. So I can think about it this way that B is going to be minus 2 because in the general form, I can write it this way as well, right? I had Y plus 2. But since in the general form, I do not have plus, I have minus. So I need to rewrite the same thing with y minus and then since it was y plus 2 so i would have to write down minus with b so this would be minus 2 and then radius is 25 no this is radius squared radius is going to be 5 so this is going to be the answer yes anything that you guys were not able to understand over here no miss everything is fine okay. no miss all right, okay, perfect. Now, this was obviously a long method. Let me write down a key point on the PDF that I was making. Like this is not going to help you directly, but once you get your um, answer, you can directly use this, okay? And this key point is basically given in the book. So ideally, you can also use this directly, but anyways, it's very important, okay? So, Key point says, if the equation is given in this form, x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0. If equation is given in this form, the center is going to be minus g comma minus f and the radius is going to be g squared plus f squared minus c okay so you are not supposed to like use these formulas and then give your answer to the examiner because in the book and in the marking scheme. And if you look at the model answers, you will get to see that for such questions, every time the examiner would expect that you apply the completing square method and then you do it, okay? But this key point is just for your reference, just so if you do something wrong while the completing square method, you know that what exactly would be the radius and what exactly would be the center for this one, okay? This is why I've written it for your convenience okay all right okay so here is again the pdf for past paper questions okay all right 
so this was the 11th question now again let's talk about another question and this is extremely important and here you will get to see blend of two topics basically okay we still have four minutes it says the point p one two lies on the circle show that the equation of the tangent to the circle at p is 4y equals 3x plus 5. Now, what's happening over here? Here, basically, we had a circle in the beginning. And the equation of the circle is now clear. And now we know these coordinates of center and the radius. So let's just imagine this thing over here. I am not going to use the exact coordinates and stuff like that. I'm just going to make a rough diagram for understanding. This was the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And just imagine that this is my circle. And this was the center. And then we have point P somewhere here with the coordinates. Forget about the coordinates, okay? Because I did not make the drawing according to the coordinates. I just made this. Because again, this you will get to see this question again and again. And for now, we are just going to discuss how to solve it and we'll talk about it in detail tomorrow. Okay. Now, what exactly is tangent? First of all, you need to talk about that equation of the tangent to the circle at P. Now, you will uh, see this word tangent coming again and again in differentiation, uh, differentiation as well, in coordinate geometry as well. What is tangent? You guys would be knowing about it because you are coming from O levels. Tangent is basically a line that is touching the circle at one point only. So if the statement says that it is tangent at P, that line would be touching the circle at point P only. Through my diagram, I can certainly see that it looks like the entire line is on the circle. But you guys know the idea behind tangent, okay? So this is basically a line. And technically, you have been asked to find out the equation of a line. Now, for the equation of line, you need a point on line. And you already have that point. How do you have that point? This is 1, 2. So... This point is lying on the line. You have the point. And what else do we need for the equation? We need the gradient or the slope of the line. So can anyone tell me how do I find the slope or gradient of the line using this? Given that this line is going to be perpendicular, right? Like this used to be a property in um, the O-level maths when you guys were studying geometry. This used to be a property. I know that certainly. So this is right angle. Okay. Now can you think about the gradient of the red line? About the tangent line? Anyone? Miss it's perpendicular. So very good. Um Mr. Ah. Very good. I, I get your point. Okay. Munja and Mutasam, what do you guys think? How can we find the gradient of the red line? Okay. It's like we will find the gradient of the C and point P. Very good. And then we will use M1 into M2 is equal to negative 1. Yes, excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. We know that when two lines are perpendicular, Modusam, this is what I was explaining to you as well uh, yesterday. The product of their gradients is going to give you minus one. Or in short, if you know the gradient of the green line, that is CP, you'll just find the negative reciprocal of it. And that would give you the gradient of the red line. Okay, so this is how we solve such questions. Whenever you've been asked to find the question of tangent, tangent is a line. It is a line that is touching the circle at point P only. So we have a point on the line and the other thing for finding the equation of circle is basically its gradient and for that 
we need to use the idea that if you have two perpendicular lines, the gradient is basically negative reciprocal of the other one. Okay, so if we are able to find the gradient of CP, which we certainly, which we would be, because the coordinates of C are given, the coordinates of P are given, tomorrow we'll see. Uh, we'll just use the gradient formula and that would give you the gradient of CP. And once you have the gradient of CP, you'll just find the negative reciprocal of it. And that would give you the gradient of the red line. Okay, so we'll talk about this question again tomorrow. Other than this one, these were the two questions we have discussed. If you have anything, any query, you can ask me right now. Or you can directly message me on WhatsApp and I'll answer you directly. Okay.